Welcome to the Art of Precision on Gillette World Sport. Coming up today, we are 27 meters up at the Cliff Diving World Series. Breaking down the basics with BMXer Kyle Baldock. And talking motivation in handball. If you get the smell of the, the success, you try to get it again and again. Now on Gillette World Sport, we're in Germany to get a lesson in handball from Bundesliga champions Rhein Necker Leuven. Fast paced, physical and high scoring, the aim of handball is to score more than your opponents by throwing a ball into a 3 by 2 meter goal. Play it on an indoor court, a handball team features a goalkeeper and six outfield players. Each goal is surrounded by a 6 meter zone, which only the goalkeeper can step foot in. While in possession, a player has three seconds, or three steps, to either dribble by bouncing the ball, pass to a teammate, or take a shot at goal. Handball is one of the fastest sports in the world, and it has an incredibly strong team spirit. I think it combines everything that makes up a great sport. There are lots of goals, it's fast and tough, and I think it's a sport that anyone can enjoy. Once you've watched handball, you pretty much get hooked on it. A good handball player has to have everything. You have to be quick, strong and mentally tough like in other sports. And you have to be a team player. If you've got all that, a degree of talent, a bit of luck and the right coaches, anyone can become a good handball player. The most important thing for the playmaker is to set up the, the attack play. Um, I have to be, first of all, I have to be dangerous by myself. And second, I have to, uh, to bring my left and right backs in a good position to, to score goals or I have to have a good connection with uh, the line player as well. And uh, yeah, yeah, you're a little bit the brain maybe of the attack and that is uh, the most important thing if you're a playmaker. I'm playing in the right wing uh, position, so I'm a left-hander because it's uh, a bit easier to throw uh, from the right side with the, with the left hand. Yeah, most of the time uh, we are standing in the corner and we're waiting for, for some balls and of course we, we need to jump uh, maybe a bit higher. We need to run fast because we are, most of the time we are the players who are getting the ball uh, in the fast breaks. I think the first two steps are really important because we do not have more space on the, on the wing position so we really have to accelerate in the, in the first uh, two steps because we want to jump uh, high or jump, uh, yeah, we, we want to get a better angle. Rhein Necker Leuven's players worked tirelessly throughout the summer, preparing for the new Bundesliga season which got underway at the end of August. The Mannheim-based club are looking to make it a hat trick of consecutive titles, having already been crowned champions the past two years, as well as aiming for European success in the Champions League. Here we don't just do strength training up in the weights room. Strength training also means working on speed. We do a lot of ladder drills to build up speed in their footwork and fast exercises for the legs, which are important so you can reproduce that speed during a match. After the boys have done the work on their speed strength, they go to the weights room to do some work on the barbells to build up a bit of power and stabilize the muscles. You need to go through these parts, parts of the season so you, you can uh, play a good role in the, in the upcoming season. And uh, through t tough training I'm, I'm getting more and more uh, motivated and, uh, and it, this pushes me for everything else also. I'm skinny, I have not that, mu uh, that many muscles and uh, I need to have a good core, I need to have a good balance, I need to have a good feeling of my whole body, but uh, every player is a little different. Uh, you, you see our line players, they are 1 or 20 kilos and uh, they train uh, in a different way than I train. And uh, yeah, you have to find your way and with the age you get more experience and uh, then you know what you need and uh, what your body needs. 
Of course, the last two seasons have been uh, really successful for us. But yeah, we have maybe two missing goals in Champions League. We just went to the stage of the last uh, 16, the last two years. And of course, the biggest goal is to win Champions League, but uh, also be part of the final four in, in Cologne next season. If I want to improve every year is something new and uh, if you get the smell of the, the success then, then you, you have it in your nose and that's why uh, you, you try to get it uh, again and again and again. And we are like a circus, we train alone here uh, the whole week and uh, then in the end or in the weekend we play our uh, circus performance in front of the people and show what we, show what we trained and show what you got. It's Destination Texas now as we join the action at the fourth stop of the Red Bull Cliff Diving World Series. The cliff diving elite entered the second half of the 2017 season in Texas, USA. After the mid-season break, the cliff divers were ready to conquer Hell's Gate, a rock formation with a sheer break in the cliffs which rise up more than 30 meters out of the Possum Kingdom Lake. Around 9,000 spectators floated out onto the water for the final round on Sunday. We joined the competition for the last eight dives and first up was the winner of the previous event in Italy, wildcard Alessandro De Rose with a back arm stand two and a half somersaults with three twists. Fine dive by Alessandro De Rose. Look at that rip entry, look at the expression, look at the reaction. He likes it, the crowd likes it. Wow, what a dive. He set the overall score to beat at 388.3. Andy Jones of the USA was up next, performing a back three somersaults with three twists. Another grand execution. Andy Jones in front of his home crowd, what a dive. This man is captain consistent. Third place last year overall, third place in the series so far. And with that dive, he stands a great chance. That dive moved him into the lead with an overall score of 390.85. Neither Mikhail Navratil of the Czech Republic or Poland's Chris Kalanis could beat that score. Up next, though, was six times Red Bull cliff diving world champion Gary Hunt with a front three somersaults, two and a half twists in the pike position. Wow, that is why Gary Hunt is a six times Red Bull Cliff Diving World Series champion. Smooth, elegant. He just makes everything look so easy, but it's not. He was left just 0.4 short of the top spot. Next, the USA's David Colturi would need to score more than seven and a half from each judge to take the lead with one of his signature moves. Oh, David Kulturi is in the running, slightly short of vertical. Beautiful twist in the air. Kulturi's dive set a new overall score of 391.3 to beat. With two divers remaining, that guaranteed him a podium finish. Mexico's Jonathan Paredes visualized his dive before performing a back three somersaults with two twists. from Jonathan Paredes, that's what we'd expect from him, the rip master. You can hear the reaction from the fellow divers. Fabulous. Absolutely fabulous. That dive helped Paredes reclaim the overall lead with 398.75 points. Only Great Britain's Blake Aldridge could beat him, but he would need to score high with his back three somersaults with three twists. from the crowd Blake Aldridge look at the reaction from him he's pumped job well done for Blake Aldridge a strong score for the dive saw Aldridge storm past his Mexican rival with 399.95 points overall securing him top spot this win makes Aldridge the fourth winner in four rounds this season but puts him in pole position overall on points as the Red Bull Cliff Diving World Series continues to its penultimate event of the year
Next up, multiple X Games gold medalist Kyle Baldock breaks down a trick which is a fundamental part of every BMXer's toolkit. Okay guys, BMX 101. Today I'm going to teach you how to do a whiplash. This is one of the basic tricks you'll learn when you start riding, and it's one of my favorites. Check it out. So we're going to start off with, you've got to be out of foot jam, <laughs> okay? So a foot jam is where you put your foot in the front tyre. After you put your foot in the front tyre, you have to kind of lean over the front to a point where you can balance. And this, this happens over time. So like you're not just going to be able to get into the foot jam and then be able to balance that for a million years. You've got to practice at it. So after you've got foot jams really good, you're going to go into the can jam. So when you go into the can jam, it's the foot over the frame into the front wheel. Now what we're going to do is we're actually going to do the same motion, foot over the frame to the can jam, but then we're going to almost kick it away from us. So when we get into this, we're going to kick it away. And you'll see the bike starts moving around. I would say to do this on the flat first, just you can get the, the motion of how it goes. So same thing, foot over, in, whip it around. All right, now the next level for that is actually riding into it. So I'll show you a way that you should practice on the ground that will help you to get it on top of the quarter. So you're gonna hop over and lean over the bars, whoop. You're gonna learn how to catch it like that. So same thing, I'll do it again. We're gonna lean over the bars, foot in, back, okay? Now when you can do this on the flat, you can do it on the quarter. The hardest bit about a quarter is actually hopping in. Now you've just seen how it works. You can add anything into this, bar spins out, bar spins into it, whip to whiplashes. When you got this whiplash dialed, you can do it anywhere and everywhere you want. This is pretty much one of the basic tricks that we learn straight away when we start riding bikes. And I hope you enjoyed it. Still to come, sprinting legend Usain Bolt talks precision. And we delve into the intricacies of course design at the Global Champions Tour. Welcome back to Gillette World Sport. Coming up, we're designing show jumping courses for the Global Champions Tour. And David Villa explains the importance of precision in football. Now we're in London for an insight into show jumping course design at the Global Champions Tour. Kings and queens on red alert. Build it up and knock it down. Tell me who gonna take the crown. Each stop on the Global Champions Tour consists of two stages and a jump off. This format means it's crucial for the design of the course to allow enough riders to complete a clean run and advance, while still being challenging enough to separate top jumpers. I design the course. I prefer technical courses. I build and after I check. The horses jump very well. The course designers are very happy. Okay, today is a fantastic day for the course designer. The idea is the, with the PC, I move, I put the pole in the ground, I check the poles in the ground, I move after is correct design. And uh, for me, it's important 10 minutes before the start, because it's the, the last minute for me for change, a little, uh, not change uh, completely, but change one up, one down. Depends of the fences, depends of the direction, depends of the sun, depends of the, of the ground. And the air in, the, in, the, in London now, this is the, the best ground for me because the, the horses is very comfortable for the horses. And this is important. The design of a course varies between every venue, with designers making use of each arena's shape and dimensions. Oriano's recent course layout at the London event included various jumps laid out in single, double, and triple combinations. The distance between combinations is always measured with precision to make the course safe for the horses and challenging for the riders. In this case, I put the distance of the double and triple combination 
long. Uh, for me, the horses is uh, important the strides inside between the fences in the double. Today, a lot of course designer, good core designer, but the difference between the core designer is the details. Uh, Uliana, a, he's a great guy. He's pretty much the only course builder on the, the Global Champions Tour at the moment. And he's a very clever guy. He knows how to make us riders work and have to think different every week without making it too difficult for the horses. With show jumping, you really know the course designers. And, and when you get to know a certain course designer, you can see a course and you can tell that he did it, even if you know if you didn't know it was him. Uliano does most of these courses. He does a great job. He really knows the riders. He knows the horses. It's a good feel when you ask him how many are going to be clean. He kind of knows. And uh, he's very, you know, he's very helpful. If I ask him one line, how many strides do I think it's going to be, he'll give us a little advice as riders. I speak with the rider because it's not possible with the horses. <laughs> but for course design, it's fantastic the possibility with the horse, but it's not possible. The rider asked me for the number of the strides with the fences. Giuliano, you know it's, it's possible five strides or better six strides for my horse. And this is the feeling, it's fantastic for me. It's the best moment in the show. Firstly, we have to walk the course just to learn the, the direction of which jumps we've got to jump in which order. Then we have to assess the, the speed or the, the line that we need to take. There sometimes can be bending lines and we could go to the inside line or to the outside line like you would in a, on a racing track, either to make it faster or to make it more imbalanced for the horse. Now he's, he's increasing the revs. Look how he's produced it. Got that turn. Produce that brilliantly. Every horse is different, so on some horses there might be uh, a line given five strides, where the horse lands and takes five strides, and on certain horses it might be very slow because they have a big stride, or some, some horses if they're a little bit small and compact you end up putting one more stride in. So every time I walk a course I really have in mind what my horses and my weaknesses are and where they could come into factor, and I really try to wrap my mind around what I need to do to prevent making a fault at certain places. I designed the course. Perfect. It's impossible. It's impossible. Good, very good, but perfect, it's impossible. My perfect is the horses jump well five years ago, and, and today the progress is very, very up. And for me, fantastic today is the ground. The progress for the ground, uh, I think better of this is, is not possible. In the future, ha, it's difficult because the level today is uh, maximum for me. Time now for a look at the videos making the social headlines. Neymar Jr. and PSG teammate Dani Alves took on Marcelo and Thiago Silva at an improvised version of table tennis while on international duty with Brazil. French defender Patrice Evra shared this intense training routine as he looks to stay at the top of his game age 36. Snowboarder Mark McMorris was back in action only five months after the seven-time X Games gold medalist suffered serious injuries in a fall. Also on the comeback trail was Tiger Woods who was given the OK to begin pitching after undergoing his fourth back surgery in four years. Fellow golfer Bubba Watson was at Fenway Park answering the call for the Boston Red Sox. The two-time Masters champion showed he could be a capable pinch hitter with this home run. <laughs> BMX star Logan Martin showed precision riding, perfectly executing this smooth run on a mini ramp in Queensland, Australia. Hey, NFL long snapper John Dorenbos wowed his New Orleans Saints teammates with some locker room magic. I tell you what, don't matter. I tell you what, there's one, there's two, there's three. <laughs> And finally, Australian Daniel Ricciardo shared a day in the life of a Formula One driver with this time lapse from his driver's room during a podium finish at the Belgian Grand Prix. Next up, champions in a whole host of different sports break down the importance of targeting precision in their professional career. Precision. It's all about getting it right. 
getting the technique right, the, the acceleration at the right timing, and the transition. You have to get everything perfect for that right race so you can run 9.58. Precision is probably one of the biggest things in Kudus Alm that's kind of underrated. Being really precise on those gates around the pole and keeping those margins down as small as possible keeps you on the optimal line. Ultimately, the shortest distance down the course is going to be the winner. Precision is very important to an AFL player, so when we get the ball, we can pass it on to our teammates and precision in front of goals. So when we get the opportunity to kick a goal and win a game, then we can do that and hopefully get a good score on the board. Precision is essential for off-road running. It's essential to be precise where you put your feet and hold your body uh, when you're running off-road on uneven trails and different surfaces. Precision is important in BMX because you've got to always be on point with where you're either going to land or kind of get back into a certain part of the ramp. Precision is very important to me because a diver needs to make sure every detail in a dive is done to the highest level possible. Precision is really important in enduro because the terrain varies that much and sometimes you're going through woods with a few inches on either side of your bike so uh, you need to know exactly where your front wheel is, where your rear wheel is. Precision, I think, is everything in football. When you've got the ball, for example, and you want to pass cleanly and directly to your teammate, I think doing it with precision is essential. Precision is important because in wakeboarding you really need to have the precision of your moves because everyone's doing similar moves and the better you are doing them, the more points you're going to get in the contest. Precision, foot placement on the wall, timing of breath, timing of pretty much everything in swimming and placing everything in the right position to the millimetre or the centimetre. You have to be super precise with your kite. If you make the wrong movement, if you uh, fumble the bar in a, in a bad way, it could cost you the race.